is going on, guys? This is Brown with Superman's Comics. And you've been with us Wednesday night. You were with us Thursday night for the Bolo Show. But this is the one night where we are talking about the official CBSI Hot 10 Comics. A lot of other channels out there have top 10, but we are the original Hot 10 list. This list has been going on for a while now. And we are going to give you the hottest 10 comics on the secondary market tonight. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What is going on, buddy? Oh, I'm excited, Brian, because we are here, like you said, talking Hot 10 Comics. This list comes courtesy of Ben Stein, writer at comicbookinvest.com, with the longest running and most important within the industry Hot 10 Comics list that exists, period. Right. Now, before we get into the list this week, we need to announce the giveaway winner from last week. And the giveaway prize was for two CBSI variants, correct, Jack? We got two variants, courtesy of CBSI owner Ben C, that come from the Vault Vintage Retailer Exclusive line. And we're talking Queen of Bad Dreams and Sarah and the Royal Stars. These two variants come with the exclusive CBSI sticker of authenticity, individually hand-numbered. And we're talking Queen of Bad Dreams numbered at a 500 and Sarah and the Royal Stars numbered at a 250. Right. So in order to enter that contest last week, you needed a comment on last week's Hot 10 video, what your favorite indie title was. We got those comments. We put them in a list, randomized it. Whichever comment was at the top of that list after randomization was done is the winner. And we are proud to announce the winner for tonight's contest is Parasitic Symbiote. And he said, my favorite indie book is Sea of Stars. I wouldn't care if it never got over cover price. The story in itself is priceless. So congratulations to Parasitic Symbiote. Please email me your address at simplemanscomics at gmail.com. And we will get that address over to Ben C, who will then get those books out in the mail to you. And with that being said, Jack, are we ready to get into the hot 10 list tonight? Not yet, Brian, because as always, we've got two Honorable mentions, books that almost made the Hot 10 list, but just didn't quite cut the mustard. But they are still moving and still worthy of being noted, and you never know, they may be on future Hot 10 comics lists. Stein changed it up on us a little bit tonight. Normally with Honorable Mentions, we get a Golden Age book, but that's not the case. Coming in at the first Honorable Mention spot tonight is Munster's number three. But not just any number three. What's so particular about this Honorable Mention, Jack? Well, the thing is, this book registered an $800 sale in a 9.4. Now, usually we're talking golden age with these honorable mentions, but here we're talking gold key. And if you know anything about gold key books, they tend to be all over the place in value. A lot of times they're in discount boxes at local shops and conventions. And the funny thing about this book is if you go on eBay right now, there's a VG copy available from Mile High Comics for as little as about $22 shipped. But that's the thing. These books are hard to find in good shape. And this one, this 9.4 sale, hit a whopping $800. We're talking three times guide value. And that happens when we're talking about these older books that are hard to find in good condition. When you get one that's in near mint shape, you can command these kinds of prices. So while you're out there at the cons digging through those boxes, looking for those Marvel monster books, you should be looking for the monsters as well. And coming in at the second honorable mention spot this week, we have the Watcher number one. That's right. We talked about it on the Bolo Show last night, and we're talking about it again on the hot list in the honorable mention spot. But we're talking about a Zenoscope book and the Watcher number one. And this book is actually surprisingly doing pretty well, isn't it, Jack? Yeah, it's selling for $15 in cover A, uh, far outpacing cover B. Ben Stein notes that he's surprised that cover B isn't doing better, being that it's a female cover, which is what you would typically expect from Zenoscope. But again, I think that this book is not selling at these prices because it's a Zenoscope book, but really in spite of it. Andy Tomlin from the Indie Spotlight series spotlighted this book on Tuesday with his Indie Spotlight series article on comicbookinvest.com. And I think that this book is doing well as a true traditional independent comic, not something you would typically see within the Zenoscope universe. This book instead is selling because of true reader buzz. So, right. Just like you said, I think that's a great surprise, especially when it comes to Zenoscope books. Every now and then, it seems like once a year, you get one of these Zenoscope books that kind of take off like this. That's why it's coming at the honorable mention spot and just barely missing the hot 10. And with that being said, we are going to get into the hot 10 comics right now. And we are talking net number 10, Blade the Vampire Hunter number eight. 
been a lot of discussion about Blade as of late. And this one is kind of different because it's also got Morbius on the cover, doesn't it, Jack? Yeah, and I really think that that's the reason for the sales we're seeing. We're seeing sales of $15 to $20 on the secondary market. This is dollar bin fodder. This is the type of book Peter Reyna of dollar bin digging on comicbookinvest.com would typically highlight. And again, I think it's speculation driven from the fact that people are looking at this upcoming Blade movie and wondering what we're going to get from it and could we get a crossover with Morbius. Obviously, that seems logical, but there is one snafu with that. Morbius is a Sony character. So we've seen Spider-Man and Iron Man and the crossover and Sony work well with the MCU. So it is plausible this could happen. But this is one of those true speculation picks where people are just kind of hoping that this will happen and speculating that it may happen and it's driving prices up. But I don't think the print run on this book is as astronomical as typical books of that era are as Blade wasn't really moving units at that time. And that's why it's at number 10 and moving into number nine. Now, a lot of times, if you get a great story and a great artist, you get a great book. And at number nine, we have Clayton Crane and we have Absolute Carnage, Separation Anxiety, the one in 100 virgin variant for this. What's going on with this book, Jack? Well, this is an absolute carnage tie-in. And you know, if you watch the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, I am bullish on absolute carnage. We talked about this last night on the Bolo Show. I think we are looking at this once-in-a-generation Marvel crossover, Marvel tie-in series. Having said that, this is a 1 in 100 variant. So while $110 is a lot of money for a variant just a couple days after release, I have to be honest, it's only $10 over ratio. So I'm not really sure which direction this book is going to go. We've seen a lot of these books hit ratio or slightly over and then drop below in the coming weeks. Time will tell. Clayton Crane has a major fan base and he is definitely growing on the secondary market. More and more people are becoming aware of him, becoming regular fans of him, and we're seeing more and more completionists of Clayton Crane. Will this be the type of book that will transcend beyond just the immediate heat of absolute carnage will this be a variant that people will be chasing for years to come we don't really know or will this be a book that next week we're talking about 70 65 dollars time will tell let us know in the comments section what you think about separation anxiety absolute carnage and this one in 100 variant be anxious to see if it stays hot or if we're talking about it on a future episode of the hot and cold show in the cold list so that brings us in at number nine but Coming in at number eight this week, this is a book that when it came out, it hyped up. You heard option news at the time, but now we're getting more news on this, right? And we're talking about Matt Cadet U number one. Now we've got this confirmed from Boom Studios that this book has been optioned and is headed to series at Netflix. Now, you know, if you watch Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, I am bullish on Netflix. My only reservation is it's an anime style release. And we saw with Cannon Busters, that release didn't really get the market going. Nonetheless, this was a dollar book just a short time ago, and now it's trading for $15. People love option news. So hit those dollar bins, and if you're sitting on these, some old spec, now may be the time to sell. Just like Jack says, usually if you have Netflix tied to a book, that's Jack's green light, but just like he had reservations. I do think this is a good time, especially to sell, but. I'm not a big anime fan. And I think even when Big Hero 6 was announced, all those books took off, right? And then, of course, once the movie came, all those books came right back down. Now it's been the cartoon that was coming on Disney Network. Saw the spike a little again. But those books are still down. So who knows? Met Cadet U. It's on the hot list this week. And we'll see if it's going to stay there. Well, yeah, Brian. And you're a big believer in selling during the announcement phase, not waiting for that show to come out, right? Yes. Always say, I think once the announcement comes out, that's the most ROI you're going to get on a book. I've been wrong before, but I really think now's the time to sell. And that's kind of the point of the hot 10 list. That's why we use the term hot 10. This is not the top 10. This is not the top 10 spec plays. These are books that are already selling in the market for these prices. So now is the time to jump on and cash out at 15 if you were picking these up for the last couple of years for between a dollar to three dollars. And then coming in at number seven this week, we have Heavy Metal number 283. And this is talking about what? The first appearance of Gut Ghost. Is that correct? Right. Now, we talked about this when Gut Ghost made the Hot 10 list. The fact that there were so many releases 
featuring Gut Ghost that came out prior to the release of Gut Ghost number one from Scout Comics. This seems to be the market winner over the foreign release, self-published release, the Ash Can, and the Free Comic Book Day issue. This book has three covers and is now selling for $30. We saw just a week ago this book selling for $10 to $15. Shout out to our Simpleman's Comics Patreon members who have been jumping all over this book over the last couple of weeks, even though Brian and I aren't big Gut Ghost fans. And it looks like it's paying off. Like I said, this book is now trading for $30. It'll be interesting to see where it moves in the future. But Gut Ghost has a lot of believers on the market. Right. There are a lot of believers. This is one character that just doesn't move my needle. So like we always say, buy what you like. This one I'm not buying. But it is hot, and that's why it's on the list. And next, we have a book that was previously number one last week, fallen to number six this week, but still hot. And we are talking about Werewolf by Night. Right. Hard to say that a book is falling when these prices are increased. It's one of those things where this book is out of most speculators and collectors' price range. Something we alluded to when we covered this book previously on the Hot 10 Comics list. We're now seeing highs in ADO of $21.50. Previous record was $1,600. This book has a rocket ship attached to it. Who knows what that top level is going to be? And who knows what a mint or near mint plus copy could end up getting. This book is hot because people are speculating that Moon Knight is coming to the MCU. But the thing is, they've always been speculating that Moon Knight is coming to the MCU. It's just that now that we're in that horror realm where we're seeing Blade, people are talking Morbius, it seems like this is an inevitability. We talked last week about casting news and the, all the different rumors of the potential casting and who could it be. But either way, this book is hot. People are anticipating this release and these prices are shooting up a la Tomb of Dracula. And we talked last week about the Senkevich Moon Knight number one from 1980 being possibly that next spec play for those who can't afford it. We talked about the 2014 Warren Ellis book also being a solid spec play. It seems like people just can't get enough Moon Knight, whether it's variants, whether it's number one issues, or whether it's this first appearance, Moon Knight is as hot as it gets. And that is also why Moon Knight is number six on the list, but... Coming in at number five, we have another boom book, and it is the top release of this past week. And we are talking about once and future number one. Not just one of them, but we are talking about all these covers because they're all doing fantastic, aren't they, Jack? Right. It's hard to pinpoint any one cover and say, well, this is the hot cover. Now, of course, if we're talking the San Diego Comic-Con Advanced Retailer Edition, we're seeing highs of two hundred dollars on this book now last week this book was trading regularly for 50 to 75 dollars a couple weeks ago this book was a 25 dollar book so it's tempting to say well that's the hot book obviously you saw it last week on the hot 10 comics list but now that this book has hit lcs's and is on the new release wall we're seeing some other books take off cover a is hitting 15 dollars and we're seeing that one per store thank you variant hitting 50 to $60. So this book is red hot no matter what cover you're getting. It was my long-term play of the week on the CBSI Bolo Show. It is a book Brian and I highlighted pre-FOC when we had Arun Singh, the VP of Marketing from Boom Studios, live on our channel for the Indie Spotlight Series show. This is obviously a book we believe in, right, Brian? Definitely. And I'll tell you right now, the one cover that you're going to want to get that's not even listed right now is going to be that second print. That one, you're going to see the heat from these. I'm not going to say die down, but it's going to pass, and then the second print's going to come out. And I'm telling you, I've heard the print run on that is really, really small, and that's why people are starting to get their orders allocated already and being pushed to third. We got fourth prints. I've even heard that the fourth print is sold out. So this is definitely one hot book, and that's why it's number five on the list this week. And breaking into the list at number four this week, we have Guardians of the Galaxy number 23. What's so great about this book, Jack? Well, aside from the amazing Rocket Raccoon cover art that you're seeing on your screen right now, which in and of itself is enough to make it a cover tunes feature for Mike Morello for sure, this book plays into Donny Cates' current absolute carnage run. What we're seeing here is the first appearance and first mention of Planet Clintar. Now, the thing about that and why it is important is it is all about the planet of the symbiotes. Now, you may remember that miniseries from back in the 90s, but it was retconned. Now it's being referenced as a cage. 
It's a cage of symbiotes that holds in none other than no. And if you've been reading anything Donny Cates has been writing, no is the god of symbiotes, the end all, be all, and one of the hottest characters on the secondary market. So because of that, anything in relation to him, anything in relation to his origin, anything in relation at all to absolute carnage is getting hot. So this book is red hot. It's now selling for $15 to $20. This was previously dollar bin fodder as well. But there's another cover for this book that is really kind of under everyone's radar. Now, the cover art isn't as nice, I'll admit that, but it's a 1 in 20 incentive, and it comes from Salvador La Roca, and it is that Welcome Home variant, those variants that honored the return of Star Wars to the Marvel Comics universe. It'll be interesting to see if that book, which is currently kind of trading below the cover A, gets some heat on the secondary market. Now, do you see this as a book that's definitely worth speculating on? Or do you see this as the hype, like when Guardians of the Galaxy and people were speculating on ego and a planet and so forth? Well, it's interesting. Like even Ben Stein mentioned, so we're speculating on planets now. And I would tend to say, if you watch the CBSI Bolo show, I don't believe in like costume first appearances. I'm not a big fan of team first appearances. I feel like sometimes we stretch things to be first appearances. Having said that, symbiote stuff is red hot. Null is red hot. And I think people are just feverish for anything that ties into this Donny Cates story. And plus, Donny Cates just has a way about writing in previous back issues into his current story and making them relevant. But it's important to note that in the past, a lot of those books have then fallen off later on. If you remember Doctor Strange 44, that comes to mind immediately. So, again, this is the hot 10 comics list. This is not the top 10 best speculation plays list. So this book is already hot. It's already selling. And I think if you're sitting on those Guardians of the Galaxy 23s, now is the time to sell because it's not going to be hotter than when this story is at its full apex. And that is right now because Absolute Carnage is one of the hottest and most talked about things in the comics market. Right. So, yeah. Definitely time to go Oprah on those Guardians of the Galaxy 23, right? And start, get, start getting rid of them. You get a Guardians 23 and you, but get the money. Don't just give them away. And that's why we have that at number four this week. And coming at number three this week, another comic that just released. And we are talking about Powers of X number two, but the Yasmin Putri variant, right? Right, and Putri has already seen some secondary market discussion with those deceased horror movie homage variants. Now, they didn't pop off on the secondary market, but collectors were all over them. Here, though, we have House of X and Powers of X connecting covers. Now, we're talking the Powers of X one being hot this week, selling for $20. But it's important to note, we like to talk process on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. If you're looking to maximize profit, one of the best ways to do that is by selling this connecting cover set as a set because it is getting $50 as a set. You're getting a bonus $10 just for having both in one lot. And the thing is, you may have sold that House of X last week before you got Powers of X. You should have known that that maybe isn't the move to do because issue number one had that Mark Brooks connecting cover and it performs similarly. So that's something to pay attention to going forward. But really, everything X is hot right now. And this House of X, Powers of X story from Jonathan Hickman has just been red hot. Readers are loving it. Collectors are loving it. People are buying the variant, and now speculators are on board. So if you've got them, I think it's time to sell them because people want them. And the bad thing is, is if you got them, and you're selling them as a set. Those books are thicker, so you're definitely going out for first-class mail. <laughs> but that's where you get the bonus 10 bucks for to help pay for that extra shipping. That's a good point, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now inside the top two of the Hot 10 this week. And I'm going to tell you, full disclaimer from me and Simple Man's Comics, although I don't agree with this, they are hot. And coming in at number two, we have Superman number 14, the recalled comic. This was a big news cycle this week. But why is this so hot, Jack? Well, if you said it in your intro because it's recalled. Because usually, if we see a book on this list, we're talking a first appearance. We're talking a rare variant. We're talking something of substance. 
This got hot simply because DC didn't want them on the market. And frankly, they shouldn't be on the market. We talked about it on the CBSI Bolo Show. I'm not a big supporter of this kind of thing. I don't think it's good for the market. I don't think it's good for the hobby. And I think a lot of the people that are out there paying $30, $40, $50 for these books may end up getting stuck holding the bag. This book right now is selling for about $30, cover A or cover B, really doesn't matter. And it's all about the, apparently the trade dress, the fact that the year of the villain's trade dress adorns this book and DC didn't want it on there. DC gave a stern warning to retailers telling them to destroy the copies, get rid of them, they're gonna ship them new ones, they're gonna ship them free of charge. But apparently some retailers would rather make that short-term buck rather than to keep their relationship with Diamond and DC Comics intact and they sold them. And we saw pre-sales flying on eBay. We're seeing live sales hitting eBay post new comic book day. But you know what? It'll be really interesting to see where this one lands because you mentioned the news cycle and that is so true. These books are hot because the news cycle is talking about them. But we all know next week there's going to be new comics to talk about. And will these books remain hot? We really don't know. Heck yeah. What about that B and Puppy Cat recalled issue for issue number 19? No one knows about that. Yeah, including me. You got me on that one, Brian. Yeah, I never got recalled. I'm just making stuff up now. So we've gone through the two honorable mentions and we've gone through the top nine of the hot 10 this week. But before we get into the top pick of the hot 10 comics, we do have another giveaway this week. And what do we have for them this week, Jack? Well, we've got another retailer exclusive variant coming from one of comicbookinvest.com's partners. This time it's Starbase 1552. And we're looking at the Ride Burning Desire number one virgin yellow exclusive cover limited to 500 copies done by cover artist heavyweight secondary market champion Adam Hughes. No doubt whenever an Adam Hughes variant gets announced, everyone's buying those up. So here's your chance to be able to get one free, but how are they going to win this, Jack? Well, all they've got to do is make sure they like the video, subscribe to the channel, and in the comment section, not the live premiere video, the final comment section, let us know what is your favorite Adam Hughes variant cover. Right. You can't say Legion of Superheroes 23. So I just took away everyone's freaking entry. Yeah, don't be, don't be that basic. Let's see some creative choices. I'm kidding. If that's your favorite, go ahead and put it. But enough talking about that. We are going to get into the number one Hot 10 comic this week. And we are talking about the other recalled comic, and that is Supergirl number 33. This falls a lot in line with the same as Superman number 14, right, Jack? You're right. We can just uh, cut and paste what I said there here. Um, obviously, I don't like it, but... You know what? It doesn't matter what I like. This isn't the AKA Mr. Bolo top 10 list of books that he likes this week. This is the CBSI Hot 10 Comics list. And the reality is we're talking about a book that released on New Comics that <clears throat> The reality is we're talking about a book that released on New Comic Book Day. It's already selling for 35 to 40 dollars. Ben made an important note, though. He said to watch out for a lot of these listings because they list the cover B as an art germ variant, which that got changed. So that's not even reality. And that tells you something about a lot of people who are just putting these listings up for pre-sales. They don't have these physical copies in hand, and they may not have gotten this book in hand because it's important to note that the East Coast retailers, their distribution hub was able to catch this mistake and not even send these books out. A lot of these books came from whether it was the South, the Midwest, uh, most of them coming from the Midwest to the West. So that's something to be uh, on the lookout for is, you know, a lot of people are putting in pre-sales and they're going to end up getting returns on, on their sales and their purchases. But again, we don't love this. It's not good for the hobby. It wasn't supposed to be on the market, which is why it's hot. And once people aren't talking about it, once it isn't getting posted all over the place on Instagram, once spec sites aren't talking about this book anymore, will it still be hot? Will Supergirl and Superman be enough to command the market? We've seen recalled comics before. We've seen them recalled for inappropriate language. We've seen them recalled because an advertisement didn't fit the age range of the book. And they have their ebbs and flows. There's times when they're popular and then once people don't talk about them, they fall back. And this could be one of those cases. And again, 
but that's the point of the hot 10 comics list. We're not telling you what books to invest in. Neither Brian or I are big fans of these books. We don't think they are good investments, but if you're holding this book, it's a hot book. It's the hottest book of the week. Go ahead and sell. Now is the time to move it. I wouldn't look at this as a long-term investment. I wouldn't even look at it as a short-term investment. I'd be looking to get it gone before that price can possibly drop. Could I be wrong, Brian? Maybe. You know, maybe this book becomes a book that raises in value. But you know what? I would bet against seeing this book on the list again. And there you have it. That's the number one comic on the CBSI Hot 10 list this week. So do us a favor, make sure you click that thumbs up button if this is your first time on this channel. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content, not just the Hot 10. We are covering what's hot and cold in comic book market trends every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. We also have the CBSI Bolo Show where we are covering hot comics releases each and every week where we are discussing first appearances, reader buzz, and variant buzz. Isn't that right, Jack? Absolutely. And don't forget, aka Mr. Bolo's long-term play of the week. Right. And not to mention, we have the Andy Tomlin Any Spotlight series, where we have interviews such as Arun Singh from Boom Studios. We have the Canto creators, David Brewer and Drew Zucker. The list goes on and on. So make sure you guys are subscribed, not only for what's currently on the channel, but that way you get notified every time new content is released. And with that being said, I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Make sure you buy what you like, and that way you'll always be happy with your collection. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, coming in, coming in yeah. Man. Flex, I just want to win, yeah. LABB, who we running with, yeah. 2233, I'm on 10 again.